A webcam that's made for streamers. I know there's many out there that claim that title, but the Elgato Facecam could be one of the best out there to do it. 1080p 60 frames, wide angle lens, and also software that lets you dial it right down to every little specific detail that you like. Let's check out why this could be the webcam to get if you're a streamer, a creative, or just someone that's wanting to get Elgato's latest and greatest. I've been a creative on the internet for over three years now, and over that time I've used a whole heap of different cameras and setups um, while streaming or creating content. Uh, for example, the camera that I'm using here now to film this YouTube video as well as other webcams uh, used when I'm live streaming. In short, the camera is amazing. Not only the quality that you get from the camera itself, but also being able to use Elgato software to dial it right down to exactly what you want it to look like. On top of that, you're able to save all those settings inside the camera itself. So creators don't have to worry about fiddling with settings constantly. As you can see already, I have a setup over here complemented with Elgato's ring light. But as usual with these reviews that I do, here's a bit of an unboxing for you. Simple, clean, and straight to the point. Good quality is usually the vibes I get when dealing with Elgato products, when unboxing them, using them, and checking them out. And the face cam is no different. Looking at the camera itself, yes, it does look very bulky, but trust me when I say this, it is very light and it is very sturdy. As you can see in the video, it comes with detachable mount that you can either use to uh, put on top of your monitor, or as you can see, you can screw it on top of a ball mount. So anything that has that right fitment, I know that it's quite standard to get that as well. So other things like tripods or gorilla pods or anything with the same fitment. Another thing that I like about Elgato's face cam is not only is it a USB-C and not only is it detachable as well but it also is very very long so this is very good for creators as some of you guys may know especially if you're set up uh, you may need like a longer cable and sometimes you get cables that just aren't long enough something else that i thought was pretty cool is it does come with a physical lens cover so whether you just want a bit of privacy or whether you want to protect the lens itself it's very easy to put on and remove if you need to there's no built-in microphone like uh, a lot of other webcams do have these days and to be honest in this day and age people don't really use uh, built-in microphones and webcams well people that are looking for this type of product would normally have a dedicated microphone or just use the one that's on the headset the camera itself holds elgato's prime lens crazy for a camera like this as opposed to other cameras i recorded a bit of a comparison between not only this camera that i'm using here um i've got his face cam but also my logitech c920 that i've mainly used over the years and as i briefly touched on in the video the software that you can get and use with this camera is amazing now when i was comparing the two cameras before like uh, this one here as well as the c920 um, both of them i set to straight default just like what you can see here on the camera there's been no uh, changing of settings or anything like that um, I put them both at default just so you can compare apples to apples. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be going through the settings that are inside um, the camera hub or the camera hub software from Elgato. Um, and we can have a look and see what we can do. I think straight off the bat noticing uh, one of the main things that I could notice between this one here and the camera that I was using before uh, is the field of view. It's much, much wider. Um, obviously the clarity as well as the frames you can see it actually picks up a lot. Um, the other thing as well is the full, uh, full focus. So there's no, there's no autofocus. Um, you can see that everything uh, in the background is all all in focus. Right down to the uh, Elgato mic arm that I have here, everything is pretty much in focus. We're going to play around with a few of the settings. Uh, we're going to turn lighting on, all that kind of stuff. I actually haven't played around with this yet, so I haven't played around with this before. Um, so I'm keen to see what we can actually do with this. Okay, now with a bit of lighting on, you can see a lot better and we kind of work with what we have. We're going to play around with a few of the settings here. 
Uh, one of the first things that we can see on the left hand side panel here is the, the zoom um, or the field of view. Now looking at it straight away I can tell that it's a digital zoom, it's not any kind of like optical zoom. Uh, where the lens or the camera is actually zooming in i can just see it's digital obviously yes zooming in but it does as you can see it gets a little bit grainy it loses a little bit of its quality um you can see everything all up on my face um, but we're gonna leave that zoomed all the way out uh at 83 at 83 degrees um we can muck around with things like the contrast saturation and the sharpness um but we'll have a look to see what what these buttons do um so okay oh, okay i see yep so if we turn it down usually if you guys watch my streams you guys will see that um i'm gonna kind of go for a look where kind of darker but not too dark you know what i mean where the colors pop a little bit but you, you'll see i want to try and get a similar a saturation as you can see i don't want it too crazy um in the sharpness i put a little bit but as you can see if we go too sharp you can see just the edges of my face as well as everything else in the room but let's bring that down to maybe like a, i think two was good where it was before um the exposure with the iso that's the first time i ever seen um like an iso or an iso uh, reading or level uh, when doing settings in a, in a camera, which is actually pretty good. I can see that it's um, set up as automatic, but I want to see what happens if we play around with this. Oh, wow, okay. Just straight away when we start playing around with this, we can see um, that it does have some stuff for us, so it changes it quite a lot. Uh, I want to see what happens. Uh, okay, I see. So this is kind of like the exposure. I remember. Um, I'm uh, working on like other exposure settings that's where we can see things like this now again I don't know too much about uh, like camera uh, like cameras or camera settings and things like that it's something I definitely want to learn I kind of just go off it and then um, just kind of see what works well and what looks good and then again the, the best thing the best thing about all of this is that we can save these we can save these profiles and it saves to the camera so what that means is for example if you use multiple setups or if you uh, save something to the camera itself you can go and plug it into like another computer and it will still have all those settings on there so you don't have to worry about redoing this all over again it saves on the camera itself makes it a lot easier a lot better to use uh, and then white balance i've usually i usually keep this at automatic because it can be kind of tricky but if we just turn this off and just play around with this as well oh wow so it's an actual temperature that's crazy so instead of just like a, a number or, or, or anything like that it's an actual uh like uh temperature as you can see so if you're wanting if you're wanting your your frame to look a bit more warmer as you can see you can see it's getting a bit more i guess orange as you can say um, or a little bit lighter but very depending what you're into very depending on how you want your picture or your camera to lock you can choose like whatever you like i think the option of having it there is really good or if you're just unsure you can just turn the turn the automatic switch on um, now the last part noise reduction uh, or the processing i believe it really does the like this depends on what kind of lights you have so i know that in certain parts of the world um someone can correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i believe that in certain parts of the world um the light bulbs and tvs and things like that um they work off different uh, hertz so 50 or 60 hertz from what i understand um and this gives us that option to change it um i believe that if we change the iso that it might let us uh, choose one of the two but for now i'm just going to leave that on automatic just so it can kind of figure it out itself where it's at now this is something that i'd probably like use this is probably like a setting or this is probably uh, roughly like where i'll keep it um where it's kind of like dark but not too dark where you can kind of see a little bit in the background and things like that sometimes i might make it like a little bit brighter so like maybe like here but again it just really depends on on what i'm doing but this is kind of like the the look that i kind of go for if i'm uh, if I got the webcam on or if I'm streaming and things like that. Uh, nighttime, usually it's a little bit different because I have the lights and stuff in the background. Uh, depending on the settings of the camera, it can actually make the lights all um, blown out and things like that. I might make a video soon and just kind of show you guys later on tonight to see, uh, so I can show you guys to see what it looks like and things like that and then just adjusting it then as well. But after we've done that, I believe what we got to do is hit save and that saves it to the camera, which makes it a lot easier. I don't, I'm not too sure, maybe it's something that I gotta check out, um, but I wonder if there is like different profiles that we're able to have, like if we can have like multiple, that'll be a lot better. All right, so now we're back, obviously it is really, really dark in here. Um, I just want to show you guys what it looks like in low light or like no light uh, per se, and it's actually still quite good. So you can see all of this still on. I'm assuming that you can barely see, uh, barely see me, maybe just my hands. It's really impressive is that the frames is still actually quite good, even though uh, it's dark or even though there's no light we just turn the light on and of all honestly i'm actually quite surprised because normally there's a lot of different settings that i need to change these are the exact settings from earlier on today when uh, there was daylight coming through the window and stuff like that um normally i have to change up quite a lot of different things but it's it's crazy i'm i'm, I'm actually buzzing out hell i could stream just like this i could just have this on and it'll still be to me it'll still be fine um i do think that we can definitely fine tune 
uh, a few settings though to make it look uh, that much more better so we're gonna check that out we're gonna try and do that now this is probably settings that I would use uh, if I was streaming at night time something uh, where it's a little bit darker where the lights behind me can actually uh, shine a lot better but you can still see my face um, if you guys have watched my streams, you'll see that this is normally what I make it look like. But I guess the main difference between uh, this camera here and other ones that I've used in the past is just the clarity. Uh, one thing that I just can't get over is just how crazy, um, how clear everything is. Uh, it's a constant 60 frames per second. On top of that, um, the focus, it really does make a difference. All the smaller details that I wouldn't normally notice, things like um, the highlights of the actual microphone itself that you can see, um, everything else that you can clearly see in the background, and then just the detail on like my clothing, my hat, and everything like that. It's something that I think is really dope. I reckon it's definitely an upgrade for most of the webcams that are out there on the market at the moment. And probably the only thing uh, that will be better than or like a bit of an upgrade from the face cam itself would be like a proper camera setup like what, what you can see I'm using now. Something set up with this with the Elgato's cam link or just plugging it directly into the computer like you guys have seen me use in the past. In my opinion, that's closer that you'd probably get to an upgrade. I'll put the face cam right in between webcams that are used or uh, have been used in the past at the moment by creators or streamers um, and something with like a full camera setup so if you're looking for a bit of an upgrade from your current webcam but don't want to go all out with the camera and everything like that face cam is perfect referencing the software again being able to use that and really just dial down exactly what you want it to look like has been the way that i've been able to make the picture look perfect to what i want it to look like to be honest it's literally the best software that i've seen being used with a webcam if you're looking for something that you can plug in have software to adjust the settings to make it look exactly how you would like to and not wanting to have to fork out a lot more money for like a full camera setup then I definitely think the Elgato face cam is perfect for you. It ticks pretty much all the boxes if you're a content creator or a streamer and it's definitely something that I recommend. I believe it's only recently been released over here in Australia and it's out at outlets like JB Hi-Fi and EB Games at roughly around about the $300 price point. That's Australian dollars as well. Like other Elgato products the price point is a bit more on the premium side but it's definitely something to consider if it's within your budget. The sleek design, software, small details like fixed focus, detachable USB-C cable, being able to save all the details so you can just plug it in and use it anywhere. Uh, little things like this make it a lot better for creators and streamers alike uh, to use something, to use a product. I'll definitely be using the Elgato face cam for live streams and thank you so much to Elgato for sending this out. I appreciate the support with the likes in the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments about this camera or what camera you use you think that this is actually worth it or not or even if you get one for yourself remember if you haven't already i really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel as well and besides that i'll see you in the next video